you um, had problems with a uh, daily BMS or any any BMS for that matter, and uh, things just being very strange and unpredictable and. Uh, when you start uh, connecting heavy loads and the thing shuts down because the cells are suddenly run down, um, then maybe this video will help you sort that out. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid Van Life, and in this episode we are going to look at uh, some of the most common issues or problems that we solve uh, with people who have bought uh, DALI BMSs, and a BMS is obviously a battery management system. And um, <clears throat> these are generally folk who are doing their own uh, self-builds DIY custom batteries and uh, who have uh, some, in some cases even returned the BMS because they deem it to be faulty. We run it through some stringent tests and discover that the BMS is actually okay. So let's get on with it. Um, not that long ago <coughs> we had a, a return. So if you look at uh, this this was a 100 amp BMS, so it's one with a small plug here. And um, as you can see, uh, the uh, balance leads were too short, so they've been extended. I mean, extending balance leads is quite common, no, no problem there at all, except that your connections must be really good. And so they're uh, a bit higgledy-piggledy and all over. I'm not sure that these are all okay because the bat the BMS was actually returned because the person just couldn't get it working properly and in the end uh, they thought it was actually a faulty BMS. We probably had about five or ten instances where people have come back to us uh, for support and uh, in pretty much every single case the BMS has been okay. In fact in every single case the BMS has been absolutely fine and it's been the implementation. So let me run through the basics of that. So a, when the BMS arrives, a daily BMS, and this is true of most BMSs, uh, you'll have a set of balance leads. So you'll have one black wire, which is to go to your main negative uh, terminal. And then you'll have four red ones for a 4S solution, obviously 8, 4 and 8S, etc. And uh, they're all terminated just by showing a bit of bare wire at the end. And they do this deliberately because every person's implementation will be different. So there's no standard, although the most common is going to be a six millimeter stud or, or uh, bolt or, or scrub screw or whatever it is. So <clears throat> this is how they arrive. And it is really important this I cannot stress enough. It is really important that when you attach a lug onto the end of these that you you get the contact really, really good. If, you, if you're doing your own battery and you're really not good at terminating these, you're actually better off paying somebody to do it for you that knows how to do it. Then, you know, you could even send it to us and we'll terminate them with lugs and send it back to you. But you really need to get these uh, the contacts absolutely solid, solid. They, they cannot be loose contacts. And typically what happens is that you crimp and you think it's tight, but actually it's loose inside and it, uh, you can actually move the wire inside the lug. So if you take the lug and the wire and you do this, sort of tugging it, pushing it and tugging it, and you can actually feel some movement, then you know there's a problem. Uh, this one here, if you can see on the close-up, I don't know if you can see, has been crimped really badly. I mean, it's just buckled. It's just all over the show. Oh, it's no wonder that this was returned. Um, these extensions are also really not very well done. So, <clears throat> all in all, when you connect your um, balance leads and the... Um, uh, bus bars onto the, the four cells if it's a 4S battery. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that your bus bars are tightened on really well to the right uh, uh, torque, which in, for these is 8 newton meters. Uh, for some of the others it's uh, 6, so the ones where you have a little grub screw going into the aluminium terminal, those would be a maximum of 6 newton meters. Uh, the laser welded studs um, so pretty much like these ones here in this old battery, these ones can go to 10 newton meters. So you need to tighten the bus bars down and, and you tighten your balance leads with them 
and generally uh, you're going to make sure that this contact is really solid. This is a set of balance leads that we have uh, sorted out for ourselves. I just want to rabbit trail a little bit uh, and talk about the fact that there are different lengths. Now some people will freak out at the thought that there are different lengths because they'll say that it's going to do uh, throw the voltage readings out. Anybody who knows a bit of science, and chemistry and what have you, physics, um, will know <clears throat> that uh, this is not going to make any difference to the reading. These are not loaded. You know, if this was a mile long, yeah, sure, it would make a difference. But this little difference in lengths of these balance leads is not going to result in a difference in voltage reading. But these are well terminated, so we've used a set of uh, lugs that uh, are self, you know, got, they've got the, uh, the heat shrink built into it, so you crimp it and then you heat shrink it. And prior to heat shrinking, we've done a tug test, so we've checked. But also, we've really learned how to actually uh, crimp these. So if you've got a, a poor crimping tool, uh, invest in a decent crimping tool to do this. So you've got to get that crimp just right, and then heat shrink it nicely so that it can't move. You can't tug it by mistake or something. So these are really well done. Let me talk about something else. Um, this is a particularly long set of balance leads. It should reach most places in your battery. Um, these these uh, are the standard ones. You can see they're quite a lot shorter and, and they're not actually long enough for us. So rather than extending them in this sort of way, which is not that satisfactory, if you need to have longer balance leads, uh, consider buying an extension like this. This is just a simple balance lead 4S extension. You get various extensions. Uh, for our batteries we just need a, a single extension like this and you'll find that it plugs in really nicely, uh, makes really good contact. It's, it's a nice snug fit, nice contact. This goes into the bottom of your BMS. So that's your BMS. That goes into there. It's a nice, nice way of extending it. Uh, you don't have all of these dicey things. Yeah, you could say that uh, there could be an issue here, but generally we find we've actually never had a balance lead extension fail on us. We've never had an issue with any of them. They've been absolutely rock solid. So if you'd need to extend your balance leads, rather buy a proper extension than to do a hack job like this. Um, I mean, one of the things I don't like is you've got this thin wire and then you've got this massive thick wire. That's all that they had, but really not well done. This video was um, uh, basically as the result of a recent support issue that we faced with a gentleman uh, who bought uh, one of our BMSs. He's in Europe, so obviously in posting it out there were customs duties and things like that. Um, <clears throat> and then he, there were several uh, messages going backwards and forwards as he faced problems with this, with his build. And of course, um, and he was great about it. Uh, we we worked, we collaborated to get to the bottom of it. But the bottom line is that um, we we felt that uh, in this particular case, it wouldn't be the BMS that was faulty. And we've actually only ever had one BMS that we personally have uh, uh, set up that uh, was dead on arrival. That's just one single BMS in all of the practically hundreds that we've worked with. And uh, so we felt <clears throat> that uh, it probably wasn't the fault of the BMS. And what he, what he had done was that he, he was looking at the voltages on his app that, the, that Daly was reporting, and he had a fluke meter on some of the cells and he was measuring, and he wasn't getting the same results on the fluke meter as he was, as we were getting on the Daly, uh, on the Daly app. And that is because he was on the fluke meter, on the voltmeter, he was actually uh, putting the contacts down straight on the studs, whereas on the BMS it was obviously going through the, the balance leads with the lugs and that. We, <coughs> we suggested to him, and, and this is a really good advice if you want to know, you know, if you're having this um, problem, basically what we would advise is disassemble your battery all together, as in take all of the bus bars and all of the balance leads off. Preferably change the order of the cells. Uh, 
So if you are uh, experiencing a problem on one of the cells, for example, you don't yet know if it's the cell or something else. And so what we'd recommend is that you change the order of the cell. So just basically take, you know, uh, take the one on the end and bring it to the other end and, you know, obviously ch change all the, the poles around so that it still makes sense. And then uh, reassemble the battery, taking really good care to uh, talk your bus bars down and talk your um, balance leads with the bus bars. In this case, with these lugs, we just uh, talk. We put the bus bar down first onto the terminal, and then we put the, uh, the balance lead, the lug, uh, over there, and then we talk it down. So this presses down onto the bus bar, which is making good contact with the terminal, and that's the way we do it. If your studs are long enough, you can actually uh, bolt your bus bars down, torque them down, and then with a second nut, uh, tighten your, your balance lead to it. So uh, <clears throat> in, in the case that I'm talking about, the gentleman uh, disassembled and checked everything. Uh, he didn't change the order, I believe, because he'd already compressed them and bound them together and that. But he did disassemble and reassemble and check everything and he found that there was a connection uh, that was a problem. Um, I'm not sure if it was a bus bar, he didn't mention it, I'm not sure if it was a bus bar or a balance lead. I suspect it was a balance lead. Having said that, one of the, when we build batteries uh, that we actually sell to our customers, uh, we have a process where when everything is assembled and ready to go, prior to actually putting the lid on and, and uh, closing it off, we have another person who didn't do the build uh, come with the torque wrench and check the torque on all of the terminals. Because it's, it's surprisingly easy to, you know, to torque everything, so you're talking, talking, and you actually forget one terminal, and what you find is it's just finger tight, and that goes out, and that initially everything seems fine until you actually put your coffee machine onto an inverter that's uh, drawing off these and then that dicey connection causes a problem. That's why when you're having these sort of problems, disassemble and reassemble really carefully, methodically, check the torques on all of them, make sure everything is torqued down properly, make sure that all of your balance leads are working properly, you know, do various wiggle tests if you need to, cut your lugs off and redo it. Um, buy an extension if you've, you know, if, it w if they weren't long enough to start with, buy an extension and work with the extension rather than extending the leads. You're better off doing it that way. So hopefully that's uh, going to be helpful if you're experiencing some sort of problem with uh, certain cells measuring a lower voltage than you think they actually have when you check them with a multimeter, that sort of thing. And I appreciate your comments and uh, any suggestions or, or just a, a quick note of your experience, what happened with you and how you solved it. And uh, hope to see you in the next episode. Thanks. Cheers.